So now it would be nice to actually verify those bearing holes to see if they're doing what we want them to do. And let's take a look. So what we're going to do is make sure that that contour is selected. We'll go up here and go verify the operations. And I can hit play here and you can see it goes around once, goes around twice. Notice it's going counterclockwise. It really doesn't show a lot of detail when it's cutting on, on this. The back plot, of course, would give us a little more detail as we saw before. So if I click here for back plot, or I can click up here for back plot, either way will show me that. And I can hit play here. It's in a different position again. You can kind of see what it's doing. I'll zoom in on the second hole. It goes over, it goes around once. Then the second time it goes a little bit wider. You can actually see the difference, the, ex the extra 20,000. And what that extra 20 thousandths does is it makes a nice clean pass. Now realize it's not an extra 20 thousandths. What it's doing is the first contour is inset 20 thousandths. And then the final finish pass is um, out 20 thousandths further, which gives that nice clean finish pass, which gives us a nice clean um, edge. The lead-in also um, won't leave a little ridge where the bit comes in. Notice if there wasn't a lead-in and the bit came straight down, it'll leave a little ridge on, on the edge of where you're milling. And on a bearing hole, I kind of would rather have a nice finish there. A couple things I want to talk about is, one, the direction of the cut. Notice I went counterclockwise here. The bit is actually spinning clockwise if you're looking down. And the flutes on the bit are actually um, designed as they cut. And if you spin, as you spin clockwise, um, if you are moving um, in one direction, the actual flutes will cut into the material. If you're moving the other direction, the, the, the flutes, basically the back of the flutes will hit it. The end mill is designed to cut either way. But... One way, if the flutes are kind of cutting into the material, it's called a climb cut. And, and that's what we did in the initial um, cuts for when we cut clockwise. And here, for the bearing holes, we did what's called a conventional cut. Both are acceptable in machining. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details here. Um, it turns out that the conventional cut, that what we did for the bearing holes, gives you a little bit nicer finish, um, and so that's why I chose that. If you do a climb cut instead of a conventional cut, um, it, don't, it doesn't really matter um, for most of the things that we're dealing with. Um, you can study up on that on your own if you want to know a little bit more. One other thing um, that I just wanted to talk about is the plunge. Realize that the end mill is spinning and you're just plunging it into the material and realize that the center of the end mill isn't really moving. The further you go out on the to the edge of the end mill, it's moving faster. And so if you just plunge in, sometimes it can be a little bit hard on the, the end mill. And there's a couple of things that you can do. One is you can reduce the plunge rate. we already taken care of that when we set up the plunge rate for that specific tool. There's also another thing that you can do back in the lead-in. And so if I go to parameters here and go back to the lead-in, lead-out, I can actually have like a ramp height. And see, I can have a ramp height of maybe, um, I don't know, maybe a, an eighth of an inch. Basically, the ramp allows the bit to come in at some ramp here instead of straight down. And what that does is works into the material a little bit easier. So I just had the ramp height being the same height as the actual thickness of the material. And so as we change and regenerate, you can see how the bit is now entering. You can see now it's coming in at some angle instead of straight down. That turns out to make it a little bit easier on the bit. 